Hey Turbs, how you doing? Just have a good swim? Feel good? It is so toasty outside. Finally though, it, the spring just took so long to get here, then out of nowhere, just boom, 90 degrees. And I'm not complaining about it. Hey, what's up gardener friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Things are gonna be a little wonky for the next couple videos. There's some stuff, all good things going on that I just, I'm having trouble working out filming timing. Just short on time, that's all it is. I started what's going to be the video after this, going to Sugar Creek Garden, Sugar Creek Nursery out here in St. Louis. You'll get to see that in the next video. I, there were a lot of people there, so filming there was pretty minimum. These are the plants I picked up while I was there. So normally I would save showing those plants or do that in the same video where I went to that nursery, but just because of time sake, I thought maybe instead of working that into a really long video, and just sit back and enjoy some plants and I can talk about what it is I like about them, why I picked them up, what I'm gonna do with them. I have four plants here. Well, not really, there's one, two, three, four, five, six plants. I picked up six, maybe seven. I'm gonna be showing off what's here on the table. There is one more very special plant that I went there specifically for and uh, y'all will get to see that one at the nursery on Saturday. For now, just look at all these little guys here. Everything I picked up is with the intent of having them planted up here in this hill garden. I call it my dump garden, I know, not the best name, but I call it that because it's the place where I just stick random plants that I want. Random plants that I want that don't really fit in with everything else that's out here. Or maybe I just don't have a spot in the garden where the specific plant would be happy. Like maybe something that likes more of a dry area. That, well, that would never work over there. Majority of the garden wouldn't work. But in this raised up area, I have some spots that are more dry and there's some spots that are shady. There's a vast array of planting options up here, but the soil does suck. It is rock hard. This whole area is getting a, kind of an overhaul. Hopefully in the next few weeks, gonna be taking some stuff out, planting a hedge along the back and just adding to it. Most of what's in here are natives or cultivars of native plants, things that are geared more towards the wildlife. And like a couple of hydrangeas and hibiscus just for boom, you know, some nice color. Hydrangeas that have to come out because it's too cold for them in that spot and they're not blooming. So I went into the nursery with one plant specifically that I wanted, but the nice thing about Sugar Creek is they have a very thorough website with lots and lots and lots of detail on there. All times I have a list going in my head of plants that I would like to get if I see them there. And I have some that I've already ordered. You can order from them and they'll let you know when it's okay for you to come and pick up the plants. So there's still some things, actually there's a lot of things left that I haven't grabbed yet. But these are ones that I have, well, some I've already grown, some are just special. If that's enough, we can just go right into it. It's not right into it when you're like three, three and a half minutes of the video. Hummingbird trumpet, that's a Monardella. Monardella. Pretty sure at some point I did a video on these a few years ago. Monardella macanthara. This one is a Marion Sampson variety. The Marion Sampsi, Sampsi? <laughs> the Marion Sampson is a very heavy and profuse bloomer. They get covered, as you can see. Look at that. Awesome awesome flowers on these plants. In fact, these flower so profusely that anytime I have grown them, which is only two other occasions, I only got a couple years out of them. They tend to uh, wither out because they have such a strong blooming power to them. They just, they get worn out. So uh, that's not something that I've ever been able to grow for years on end, but even if it's just for a couple years, I'm okay with that. Just get new ones. Pollinators really do enjoy these. They are native, I believe, to Northern California, or is it just the mountainous areas of California? It's been a minute since I read up on them, so I have to refresh my memory. Trumpets of scarlet orange flowers bloom nearly all summer above low mounds of semi-evergreen leaves native to the mountains of California. So not northern California, the mountains of California. Uses a focal point on a wall, rock garden, or container to provide protection from heat of summer. That is important. May need winter protection in some areas. I think these are listed as 5B. Never lost one during the uh, winter time. I have had them wither away in the summer though. Best tip I can give with these is to put them in a spot that gets nice bright morning sun and afternoon shade, or at least filtered afternoon sun. As if you live someplace with really hot, humid summers like me. Uh, they just wither away if they get too much moisture and it's really hot and humid outside. And I have plenty of spots like that up in that hilly area. I'm always on the fence. It's whether or not I want to grow more of these because I know I only get a couple of years out of them, but it's just worth it. Once these up here all open, 
it's really something special to see. If you have a rock garden or a, just an area with soil that drains very, very freely and gets some filtered light in the afternoon and you want something that grows nice and low and flowers heavily, like very, very heavily, this is an awesome plant to go ahead and try out. And the pollinators go crazy for these. There's almost always bees and butterflies swarming around them, so I can't wait to see that bloom some more. Next plant, that was just, that wasn't the shot I was hoping for. Try that again. Next plant, there it is. This is one of the Lediva lavenders. I don't know if you've heard of them before, but they're pretty freaking cool. This one's called Big Night. The flowers on the Lediva Big Night, they have like a, almost a blackberry purple to them. They have nice, big, very dark bluish purple flowers on them. They will get those little rabbit ears that pop out from the very tops. Smells amazing. Medieval lavenders are a cross between the English lavenders and the Spanish lavenders. So you have nice, strong, sturdy foliage on them. Excellent heat tolerance. Supposed to be good in hot, humid climates provided that they have proper drainage. Still get some of that kind of icy blue foliage that I really like in a lavender. And those flower heads are held up nice and high above everything else. They have a great contrast and it does smell very nice, which I know you would think, okay, well, it's a lavender. Of course it smells nice. Not uncommon with a lot of the hybrids to not get the fragrance that you would want to get out of a lavender. And the Ladivas still have a very nice, strong smell to them. They have a nice growth shape to them that they hold on to fairly well. Pause for an airplane. Ladivas are bred for heavy blooming, hardiness, great landscaping performance, outstanding fragrance, and superior heat and humidity tolerance. I read that directly from the website. I didn't just say that. I didn't just come up with all that. You get everything you want with these. I've had a hard time finding lavenders that will do well in my garden. What, I mean, that's actually okay. Let me back that up. There are plenty of lavenders I've been able to find that do well in the garden that have been hybridized for better strength to uh, heat and humidity, which are the main issues that I have trouble with when it comes to growing lavender, but I don't get the fragrance. But that always comes at some sort of sacrifice. Like, I don't like the look of the plant. Maybe it's one that's more green, doesn't have the silvery tones to it, or really long leaves. I like the more compact, sturdy leaves that you get on something like this, or the flower heads are down low, or they aren't very colorful, you don't get fragrance, or any combination of those things. But that's not going to be the case with the Ladivas. They're supposed to bloom profusely all summer long. We'll see about that. I'm sure it'll need some prunes to refresh the plant in order to keep it blooming properly. I don't mind doing that with the lavender. You can share all the stuff off the top, dry it out and use it for other things. I have family members who like to have lavender around. They use it as decoration, so cutting it up, not a big deal. Okay, so here, it's thirsty. I've watered this thing three times today. The soil's moist. I tried really hard to get it looking good to film, but this one's it's just struggling. I had said that the plants I got while I was at Sugar Creek were plants that I'd wanted to get for a long time or I had been on the lookout for. That's not the case with this one. This was an impulse buy. I saw it while I was there and I thought the flowers were just beautiful on there. You'll probably want to see the picture since the plant itself isn't looking too hot right now. So beard tongue, cherry sparks, penstemon. Bloom summer through fall in little waves. It's a 18 to 20 inch height on that one. I just really like the flowers on this one. Look at those, aren't they nice? Those cherry red flowers. That's really gonna help draw in the hummingbirds. That should keep them happy. I think it's just shocked from going from these cool 60 degree days to just boom. 93 we had heat uh, another airplane but we went from a very cool spring temperatures in between the 40s and 60s flows in the upper 20s and upper 30s plenty of nights in the 40s between 25 and 65 somewhere in there that's where we were bouncing around had a few nice days in early april and some back in march and february but most of april cold and then all of a sudden it's just 93 or 94 degrees we had record-breaking temperatures and it was very dry because we haven't had rain so that's I assume that that's what happened here. I'm going to be keeping this one in the shade for a few more days because that was just too much of a shock. I won't be putting that in the ground until it's refreshed and looking better which I'm not ready. It's going to be like probably three weeks so I'm planting that area up anyway. I think it just needs some time to adjust to the heat. Next I'm really excited about these. These are cool. These are the Suncatcher Helianthus. It's a hybrid sunflower, a perennial sunflower. I know there's not much to see with them just yet, but believe me, in just a few weeks, a couple months time, these are going to be looking very impressive. Here's the tag. I can put it over there so you can get a look 
at the name on that one. Suncatcher, Sunflower, it's a Helianthus hybrid. Fairly decent sized flowers on this one, especially considering how incredibly short it is. It's just getting going. I would have been nice for it to be a little bit bigger, but this'll do. As long as the root structure in there is nice and big, that's really what I care about the most. You can see some roots coming out of the bottom, so I'm pretty confident that there's going to be a nice sized plant that comes from this this year. I don't think I'll have to wait too long for it to get nice and big. These will get two to three feet tall, though I have seen some things online when I have read about them saying that they'll go three to four feet, so time will tell with that. We'll see what it does. Hardy zones five through nine. It's a sunflower, so it just needs sunflower care. So full sun, at least six hours a day. Well-drained, organically rich soil. I am very careful with how I water my sunflowers. Just I pay attention to the weather. If we haven't had rain in a while, then I will water them as much as I think they need it. But if it's really humid out and really hot and there's still moisture around, it's not a plant where I make sure to give them a heavy drink every single day. I tend to rot on me when I do that. My yard's very wet. But again, up there on that hill that I was showing you, that soil drains pretty well up there. Should do fairly well up there. I have a lot of plants up over there that are very drought tolerant and uh, seem to uh, do fine with the soil that's up there and the light that like similar conditions to these. But with the perennial type sunflowers, there aren't a ton of them, but all of the ones that I've tried I haven't really been impressed with them so far. I've read a good amount of nice, encouraging information about these. And I don't know if you've noticed on the pot here what that says. Grown here to thrive here. I very much appreciate that. You can tend to be more confident with the plants that you get from a nursery when you know that they've been locally grown, things that people have tried to grow in the area. So they already know that this one does do okay here with the type of weather that we have. That's helpful. It's another great thing about local nurseries is oftentimes the plants that they carry are already going to be plants that they know or hope are going to do well in your area. And there's not as much guesswork. When you go to a big box store, they just have a required amount of certain things to keep in stock. You know, their top 10 or 20 or 50 best sellers. Those need to be there at all times. And then on rare occasions, they might throw something in there to mix it up. And those things that they throw in there to mix it up oftentimes aren't things that will do well in the area. And I'm, I'm okay with that with the big box stores because there are a lot of zone seven plants that will do well here, but aren't sold here because I'm in zone six. So I do like every now and then seeing, you know, camellias and things like that at the nursery. This gives that extra peace of mind knowing that it's been grown here locally by people who already are saying that it will do okay here. Doesn't mean it's gonna do great for me in my yard, but it helps me feel a little bit better about planting it because I haven't had great luck with the other perennial sunflowers that I've tried. They just rot away when it gets really, really hot outside. Yeah, hopefully that won't be what happens here, but we just have to wait and see. We'll find out together. Perennial sunflowers are gonna be more of a multi-floral look to them. So two to three feet high is what that said. I'm hoping for more to the three to four foot size, but I'll, I'll take it as long as it does well. It can be smaller than that, that's okay. I'm going to have multiple flowers on the stems and be just covered in flowers at all time. It's not a sunflower where it's just one plant with one flower, maybe a couple little ones that come off the side. It's a whole different thing, but at the same time, it's not. They're fun plants. We'll get to watch them grow together. Was that it? Nothing else? Oh, no, no, there is one more. It's a, it's a little lotus vine, a red lotus vine. Come on camera, there we go. See that nice red flowers on there. Typically when I see lotus vines for sale, they're usually orange around here. I actually don't always see them for sale as often as I would like to. There is a reason for that though, and it's that they, they, they don't do great here in St. Louis. The plant itself for foliage, you just want a spiller as an annual over the front of your pot. I should have mentioned these are an annual. I believe they're a zone 10 and up. I don't know if it's going to say on here. Oh, it says hardiness zones 12 to 15 on there. I don't know if that seems a little bit extreme, but I, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes that's just what they put on the containers for annuals. Not frost tolerant, how about that? They will fill out very nicely and come over the edge and cascade from the containers and baskets and they have a beautiful silvery tone to them. They're really soft. They're fun to play with. They're vigorous growers. But the main thing I like about them isn't the foliage, even though it is nice. And like I said, it's fun to play with. For me, it's all about the flowers. If you've ever seen a lotus vine in bloom, it's just beautiful. They have flowers that come out. They look almost like a, like a little claw or hook, like just whole bunches of them in red or orange. I think there's yellow too that come down the stems, they cascade along with the plant, and it is 
stunning. I used to see them a lot up in the Pacific Northwest in the Seattle area. They would bloom very well up there. And there's a reason for that. And it's that these mostly only bloom in places that have nice, cool nighttime temperatures, which we don't. And I'm okay with that. I actually like warm summer nights. It's one of my favorite parts about summer. I have on one occasion had a lotus vine that bloomed for me when uh, we moved. I want to say it was probably around September and uh, we were pushing towards fall and so the highs were in like the 80s low 90s and nighttime temperatures were dropping into like the 60s and 50s which is unusual for here but we had a cold spell where that went on for a couple weeks and it bloomed so I, not that i want that to happen but if it does then at least we'll get to enjoy some flowers on the lotus vine if not that's okay it's a great speller they have nice texture I enjoy having them around, but I really, I want to try and get it to bloom. I don't know what I mean by try, like I have no control over the weather. Making sure all their needs are met, that organically rich, well-drained soil needs to be consistently moist and uh, probably for best chances of getting flowers out of them. If you live in a warmer area like I do, warmer nighttime temperature area, then putting them someplace that has a good amount of airflow around the plant. Maybe a hanging basket that's staked up in the garden somewhere where the air can circulate freely around the plant. That might do it. I don't know. Probably not though, because it's not just like a couple cool nights here and there will do it. For those of you who live up north, I would highly, highly recommend these annuals. I have seen them growing up in, where is it? Like Traverse area, Michigan. They would flower up there. It looked very nice. So all you Minnesotians and Michiganders, Wisconsiners, this might be a great annual for you. That would be a good thing for y'all to comment on down in the description because I don't know that for sure other than that I have seen them growing well in Michigan, like covered in flowers. And I think in Chicago too, just covered in flowers, really big. These will get very, very big. Like this will easily fill out, I would say probably a 24 to 30 inch area by the end of the growing season where I live. And then if you were to have the conditions to have that flowering, just imagine how cool that would look. It will be beautiful and you'll be so happy that you planted it. But yeah, comment down below. Let me know about that. That was, I don't know if I talked about that with the hummingbird flower. They don't like it super hot. So they thrive the most during the time of year where there are cooler temperatures. That's something these two have in common. I did talk about it. So afternoon shade, that's what I had said, right? Afternoon shade if you live someplace hot like I do for the hummingbird trumpet mint over there the monardella yep that's it those are the plants hope you enjoyed this little plant chat just looking at things nothing serious going on here comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody what are some of your experiences with these plants where do you live so that well not where do you live but your growing zone weather conditions that way people can relate and know how well they've been doing for you any experiences with the ladiva lavender or the cherry beard tug cherry sparks beard tug that this is so sad. It'll be fine though. And what about the suncatcher helianthus? It's a pretty popular one. I think a lot of people have grown those before. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.